Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to be taking a bit of a look at Run Saber, released by Atlas for the Super Nintendo back in 1993. It's a shame, really, that a lot of people have kind of dismissed Run Saber over the years as nothing more than a Strider clone. And granted, the gameplay is remarkably similar to Capcom's classic arcade action game, but Run Saber does have something going for it that Strider does not, and that is its two-player cooperative mode. As much fun as Run Saber is, is a single-player experience with two players playing cooperatively, the game really does take on a life of its own. And I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get my one complaint with this game out of the way early. And that is the game's length. It is a really short game. There are only five total levels in the game, and that's including the final stage at the very end. And even all of the levels, all five of them, are just really short. There's not much to it. The whole game can be finished in maybe about 20 minutes or so, and that's on average. Now, that issue aside, I don't mean to say in any way that Run Saber isn't a good game. Matter of fact, it's a really good action platformer that is a ton of fun. The whole game is just very well put together, and the gameplay in and of itself is fast, accurate, and just feels very well made. And you know what, we'll go ahead and get the Strider comparison out of the way early as well. Yes, the gameplay is similar to Strider in that you swing what looks like some sort of a plasma-type sword at enemies. But what separates Run Saber from Strider, outside of its two-player mode, are the sheer assortment of moves that the characters have. There are also item pickups that you'll find along your way through the game's five stages, and these consist of health ups, extra lives, and, of course, magic attacks. Thing about Run Saber is both characters have a different magic attack, and these can be added to throughout the course of the stage, and usually the best time to use these attacks is while on a boss. It usually makes short work of pretty much any enemy, and most bosses will go down after about three or four of them. One thing I think that's worth noting about Run Saber, and something I think that's pretty cool about it, is that both Alan and Sheena do attack at different angles. What makes this cool is that when you pick your character, it changes your strategy a little bit depending on what you're fighting. Some bosses are going to be a little easier to hit with Alan, while some other ones may be a little bit easier to hit with Sheena. It really is just all about your preference. That being said, it's really no harder with one character over the other one as far as beating the game goes on single player, and that's more so attributed to Run Saber's default difficulty. You see, the game itself is really not overly challenging, and I'm not saying that it's incredibly easy either. It'll take a little bit of practice, but for the most part, you'll get through the game with little resistance. The graphics in Run Saber, in my opinion, are one of its high points. All of the stages are really well done, very colorful, and each one of the five levels is very different and has its own unique style. The character design is also really well done, all the bosses look very unique, and there's even some really good usage of Mode 7. And one great example of that would be the first level's boss fight, where you're taking on a monster on top of a jet that's flying around while you're in the process of fighting it, and it looks really cool. Oh yeah, and speaking of bosses, how about that awesome level 2 boss where you fight that crazy zombie lady? That thing blew my mind the first time I saw it. And now on to the sound effects and music. The music itself in Run Saber is really excellent, and each stage has a very memorable and unique theme. The sound effects unfortunately suffer from that very common, echoey Super Nintendo sound, but I don't really blame the game for that, I more so blame the Super Nintendo sound chip for that one.
All in all, Run Saber is a very good action game for the Super Nintendo. And hey, it definitely doesn't hurt that the game is two players cooperatively, which isn't very common with games in this genre on the Super NES. And sure, it may be short and there may not be that much to it, but for the five levels that it lasts, it is a lot of fun. I can go ahead and wholeheartedly recommend Run Saber to pretty much anybody who's a fan of action games on the Super Nintendo. The one string attached to this, however, is that the game used to be only worth about $5 or $10, and now, for some reason, it goes for anywhere between $30 to $50 on average. If you can find a good deal on it and find a price point that you're comfortable with, go ahead and pick this one up. You will not regret it. As always, guys, thank you for watching and subscribing, and until next time, stay classic.